Hello everybody, this is Bill Hudson with Cosmophobia.org. Uh, today some friends of mine and I are going to be taking a look at some claims by the Double Zero Skyview, so hang on. In a YouTube video posted on August 11th, 2013, the YouTube user the Double Zero Skyview makes some outrageously incorrect statements. Among other things, he claims that his team has photographed a Kuiper Belt object near Neptune. In response, the YouTube user Dazza the Cameraman asks some straightforward questions, questions that any astronomer claiming to have found an object would be expected to be able to provide. And here are the questions. What are the right ascension and declination coordinates of the object over the next seven days? What's the estimated size of the object? What is its current distance from the Sun in AU? What is its current distance from the Earth in AU? What is its current angular size? And what is its current apparent magnitude? As of today, August 22nd, 2013, the Double Zero Skyview has not answered any of these questions. In this video, we, a small group of amateur astronomers, will examine the Double Zero Skyview's claims in detail. Claim number one, the ancient Maya predicted Comet Ison. From his video, how did the Mayans know that Comet Ison would arrive in 2013? Before asking how did they, shouldn't we be asking did they? So I asked Professor John Hoops with the University of Kansas who has studied the ancient Maya extensively this simple question. Did the ancient Maya say anything about comets? His answer was essentially not that we know of. In all the literature that we have on the ancient Maya, in all their petroglyphs, paintings, and writings that have been uncovered so far, we do not have even a Mayan word for comet. Which begs the question, where does the Double Zero Skyview get the idea that they could predict comets? Since we have no deciphered writings of the Maya that even mention them, how and where was this prediction made? Also, Comet Ison is a hyperbolic comet. That means that it is not periodic. This is its one and only journey through the solar system. How does the Double Zero Skyview propose that the Maya had the technology to predict this comet? Where are the telescopes? He then goes into an irrelevant and slightly inaccurate description of the Maya calendar system. Hint, it's a lot more complicated than he thinks. And then makes the following baffling statements, which are the basis of his next two claims. Claim number two, time is cyclical. And claim number three, comets are cyclical. From his video, time is cyclical, but so are comets. What? Time is cyclical? Since when? What does that even mean? We measure time by observing physical change. Some of these changes are cyclical. For example, the hands of a clock, the rotation of the planet, the orbit of the solar system around the galaxy. But that doesn't mean that time wraps around upon itself. Time is linear, not cyclical. And no, not all comets are cyclical, i.e. periodic. Some comets come back on a regular basis. The most famous of these is Comet 1P Halley. The P in the designation shows that Halley is a periodic comet, that it returns in a regular period of time, 76 years for 1P Halley. In contrast, the official designation of Comet Ison is C-2012-S1, indicating that it was the first comet discovered in the last half of September 2012, and that it is a non-periodic comet. So the Maya didn't predict C-2012-S1 Ison, and as far as we know, there isn't even a Maya word glyph for comet. Ison is a non-periodic comet, and as such is not cyclical as he implies. Whatever he means by time being cyclical, it doesn't match up to any theory of physics that we're aware of. Claim number four, an explosive alignment with Comet Ison will occur. 
from his video. See 2012 S1 and an explosive alignment are brewing. We hope you're ready. An explosive alignment? Is he trying to imply that Ison will create an explosion, or is he just trying to say that this alignment will be significant in some way? It's difficult to say because he doesn't answer our questions. Claim number five. Venus will be at an inferior conjunction with both the Earth and Jupiter. And claim number six. There will be an electrical alignment. From his video, Venus will be at inferior conjunction with the Earth and Jupiter, all aligned electrically. Well, at least the conjunction claim is actually close to reality. The next inferior conjunction with Venus occurs on January 11, 2014, and the next opposition with Jupiter occurs on January 5, 2014. The two events are only six days apart, so the conjunction claim is almost true. Almost. But then in the very same frame, he plunges off the deep end by claiming that the planets are all aligned electrically. He then claims that this alignment has the potential to create an electrical storm of biblical proportions. From his video, with the interaction of this alignment, the potential exists for an electrical storm of biblical proportions. This next image shows the alignment. There is no electrical connection between the planets. Interplanetary space is dominated by the solar wind, which consists of charged particles, or plasma, flowing outward from the sun. Interplanetary solar plasma disperses rapidly as it leaves the sun's atmosphere and enters a collisionless state, meaning that the individual particles do not collide. Since the individual particles do not collide, there is no electrical current. I've included a link there for more information. It is only when the solar plasma enters a planetary magnetic field or magnetosphere and is trapped by it that the particles can build up and create a charge which can cause electrical reconnections and discharges. The double zero sky view is just repeating the pseudoscience of the electric universe proponents. The planets have no significant electrical effect on each other. And now about that next image of his. From his video, highlighted in yellow is where we believe this electrical zone will set up. His zone comprises one quarter of our orbit. This image is also very misleading for many reasons. Number one, the scale is way off, concealing the true positions of the planets. The orbits are too small and not proportional to each other, and the planets and the sun are too large and also not proportional to each other. Number two, the dots for Ison and this fictional KBO are massively too large. And number three, the solar system is displayed at an angle, further distorting the positions. Let's look at a more accurate picture of the solar system. Here is an accurately scaled picture of the solar system out to Neptune. You can barely see where the inner planets are. Now let's zoom in to Jupiter's orbit. We can see the orbits of the inner planets a bit better, and we can get a much better idea of the distances. We can also see why he used an inaccurate graphic. Try to imagine a quarter of the solar system between Venus and Jupiter blocked out in yellow here. It's a much larger volume of space than he depicted. Claim number seven, Comet Ison will leave a debris field. Claim number eight, Earth will orbit into the debris field twice. And claim number nine, some of the debris will be large enough to create a significant change on Earth. From his video, Comet Ison will likely leave behind a debris field. Earth will orbit into this zone twice. We believe some of the trailing debris in the tail to be large enough to cause a significant change on Earth. Yes, we expect that Comet Ison will leave a debris field. Comets tend to do that. And when the Earth passes through the debris of a comet, we encourage you to go outside and watch the meteor shower. That's where meteor showers come from, comet dust. 
What the 00 sky view is doing with this claim is very dishonest. He's taking an ordinary event, something that happens all the time, and making it sound sinister by using non-standard terms. Debris field sounds a lot worse than comet dust. Comets leave behind dust, and Earth passes through these streams of dust several times a year. So what? Regardless, it is a moot point. The Earth will not pass through the tail of the comet, as he claims. It may pass through some of the dust left by Comet Ison, or it may not. Watch this video by NASA showing the path of Comet Ison. This frame from that video shows that Ison will pass through the ecliptic plane inside the orbit of Earth, both inbound and outbound. The Earth never intersects the path of Comet Ison. Even if the Earth was actually going to intersect the orbit of Ison, comet debris or dust is tiny. Usually it is smaller than grains of sand. Unusually large pieces can be the size of gravel. However, there is a chance that we may interact with some of the dust from Ison. The solar wind may transport enough of the dust into our orbit that we might intersect it in mid-January. However, if this happens, it will only be the smallest dust particles, a few microns across, and so it would be so fine-grained that it wouldn't even produce a meteor shower, but rather may produce the beautiful phenomenon of noctilucent clouds. Check out the links below. Claim number 10. There is a zone of ison. Whatever that is supposed to mean. Piling error on top of error, he then shows us this graphic. As with his prior graphic, he's using captures from solarsystemscope.com, but with the sizes of the planets and their orbits set incorrectly, giving the impression that things are much closer and much larger than they really are. In fact, there is a significant error in this image. I mean, besides the other significant errors we've already discussed. The positions of the planets in this image show that he has incorrectly set the date to September 17th, 2014. Here for comparison is a snapshot from solarsystemscope.com showing the date. He has also displayed the path of Comet Ison incorrectly. Here is an image generated by Starry Night Pro Plus 6 astronomy software showing the correct configuration of the inner planets on September 17, 2014, and the path of Comet Ison, more than 90 degrees off from where he displayed it. Not only did he incorrectly display the path of Ison as being much wider than it is, he got the direction completely wrong. But, as we shall see later in this video, we have come to expect this from the double zero sky view. Claim number 11. He has calculated the Mayan calendar end date. What? Seriously? This again? Wasn't the utter failure of all the Mayan calendar end date predictions on December 21st, 2012 enough? Let me introduce myself properly. My name is Bill Hudson. From April 2009 through December 31st, 2012, I was the administrator of this site. So here we are, nearly one year later, and he's trying to revive that failed hoax? Seriously? Is he that dumb? From his video, we have calculated a Mayan calendar end date of December 16th, 2013. The Maya were aware of a cycle associated with repeated impacts of comets with Earth, and they engineered their calendar to track these cycles. <sighs> Well, I guess that answers that question. Claim number 12, the Maya were aware of cycles of comet impacts. And claim 13, the Maya engineered their calendar based on cycles of comets impacts. Let me be blunt. Well, even more blunt than I have been. All of the claims that the Double Zero Skyview is making about the Maya are complete and utter bollocks. 
His new Maya calendar end date of December 16th, 2013 is one ton or 360 days after December 21st, 2012. In the long count, it would have been 13.0.1.00 as opposed to the 13.0.0.0.0 long count date that occurred on December 21st, 2012 and caused so much unnecessary consternation. We would be interested to know why he thinks that this date might be considered significant, or why his calculation is better or more accurate than the calculations of the scholars who have spent their lives studying the Maya civilization. For more information on the Maya calendar, please see the link below. He doesn't have a clue on how to calculate the Maya end date because there never was one. The Maya, who apparently don't have a word for comet that we know about, did not track comet impacts, and therefore obviously would not have built their calendar around them. I invite the Double Zero Sky View to demonstrate that his claims have even a shred of truth. As it stands, his claims about the Maya are empty, hollow, unsupported by any evidence, and completely contrary to the evidence that we have on the Maya and their civilization. Funny, that kind of reminds me of his claims about astronomy. Speaking of which, claim 14. He is following an object in the Kuiper Belt. In claim 15, he believes that it is responsible for sending Comet Ison into the inner solar system. From his video, here is the object we have been following in the Kuiper Belt. We strongly believe that this is what kicked Ison out of the Oort Cloud and is most likely our Sun's binary star. He then shows us this featureless round blob. No background stars, no information on the imaging equipment used, or on the telescope used, or on the magnitude of the object, or the magnification employed on the scope. Nothing. For all we know, this image only exists on his computer and not in the sky. Apparently, we're just supposed to accept his word that it is what he says it is. And now we'll discuss why trusting his word is a horribly bad idea. It appears that the Double O Skyview has been stealing imagery again and passing it off as his own. By again, I mean that this is not the first time that the Double O Skyview has been caught doing this. In fact, he has been caught faking imagery and stealing other people's pictures and claiming them as his own several times. See the links below. In his latest video, the Double O Skyview presents the following image. The image purports to show a Kuiper Belt object, or KBO, within a few arc seconds of Neptune. The problem is, the image is fake. He downloaded a real image of that area of the sky, and then photoshopped Neptune and his KBO in later. Here is the real image that the Double O Skyview downloaded from the Digital Sky Survey site. I provided a link and some additional information. How can we be sure it's the same image? YouTube user Messier Hunter says, This is the background image to his Neptune KBO image. It's the POSS2 UKSTU image of those coordinates with the red sensitive film plate. The very slight tracking errors, the diffraction spikes, the film grain pattern, it's all the same. To illustrate his claim, SAA Hunter has provided the following, which is the Double Zero Skyview image and the POSS2 image blinking back and forth. This is the electronic version of the old blink comparator test. Now pay attention to the model pattern in the background of the image. Did you see the background pattern? Did you notice how it was exactly the same over most of the image? Messier Hunter says, notice the film grain noise in the image is the same. That's like the fingerprint of the image. It's unique to that specific film plate. To show this is valid, Messier Hunter also compared the Double Zero Sky View's image with the blue plate. Everything else is the same, except that the picture was taken with a blue sensitive photographic plate. It should be obvious by now that the Double Zero Skyview downloaded his imagery from a publicly available source, edited it, and then is now trying to claim that it is an object that he is tracking. There are other issues with this image besides the fact that it is totally fake and stolen. Neptune is in the wrong place, just a few arc seconds out, but in the wrong place regardless. In fact, the best fit for where he shows Neptune turns out to be the day after he uploaded his video. 
but then we already knew the image was fake. Number two, the resolution of Neptune and the fake KBO are different than the rest of the frame. And number three, this is a monochrome image, but the fake KBO is red. If it were actually a color image, then Neptune would be blue. Like this image taken from another video online. He has claimed that his fictional KBO was an Aquarius, but that it is somehow responsible for dislodging Ison from the Oort cloud. Apparently he is unaware that Ison was discovered in Cancer, which is approximately 14 hours of right ascension ahead of Aquarius, very nearly on the opposite side of the sky, making any connection between the two pretty much impossible. The double zero sky view then goes on in his video showing imagery of a supposed second sun or other unidentified objects in the sky. Of course, he provides no information that could be useful in verifying the images, making it impossible to verify or refute them. We will ignore those claims for now, as this video is already long enough, and his major claims have been blown out of the water. Okay, time to wrap this up. Conclusions. The Double Zero Sky View has not presented any original imagery, or at least not any original imagery that can be verified. Despite the fact that he claims to have access to a 32-inch research-grade telescope, he steals images from websites, edits them, and presents them as his own. He consistently gets the astronomy of his claims incorrect, not only in the details, but in the overall concepts of astronomy as well. He consistently uses misleading graphics and confusing and contradictory explanations. When asked to provide details, he refuses. When caught out in his duplicity, he removes the evidence by removing the videos. Too late this time, we've already downloaded the video in question to MP4. Despite his claims that the account belongs to a large team of amateur astronomers, the Double Zero Sky View is most likely a single individual with little to no actual astronomy experience. Since he has presented no original imagery that we can find, we question whether or not he actually has access to a telescope and imaging equipment. We conclude that the most likely explanation is that he is a classic troll who is posting his claims in order to elicit an emotional reaction. In other words, he's doing it for the lulls. Please visit our groups on Facebook, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex, and or Cosmophobia. Subscribe to Messier Hunter and Dazza the Cameraman on YouTube, and visit us on the web at www.cosmophobia.org. Well, that's all, and thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.